Thank you, Paul. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining me in this session where I'm going to try and talk about um, why we are not doing user research in free software. Um, the truth is that the vast majority of the free software projects I know of don't do any research with users at all. And those that do, they tend to do <coughs> surveys, which is kind of the lowest common denominator in the world of user research. And to be honest, they, on their own, they are not even that useful for design purposes. So why is this? Why aren't we doing user research in free software? Why are we scared of it? Um, if I guess if I'm going to talk about design and research and the relationship between the two, I probably should start by explaining what I mean by design and what I mean by research. So for the purposes of this talk, design is interaction design. And interaction design is the branch of design that deals with the structure and the behavior of software interfaces. And um, interaction design is what, you, what you're doing, what you are making decisions about what your software should do and how it should do it. And understood in this fashion, interaction design applies to all kinds of software and to all kinds of interfaces not just the graphical ones. And uh, for the purpose of this talk, research is any activity that involves your users in the process of making the software. So basically user research is about getting users to help you or to work with you in the interaction design work. Can interaction design exist without research? Can it truly be done without the research parts? In the university where I study, I am surrounded by people who believe that you cannot do interaction design and you shouldn't be designing anything really without doing research. But when I spend time with people in the free software world, very often or often, I come across people who are somehow wary, nervous, and sometimes downright hostile to this idea of doing research with users as part of the process of making and developing software. Those people I've come to call somehow jokingly the naysayers. And um, on the basis of their arguments against this research, I've come to classify them into four groups. The age scratchers, the scornful, the dismissive, and the defeatist. So if you allow me, I'm going to go through each of them in turn. So let's just start with the age scratchers. The age scratchers are people who believe, who are developing software, who are making software, and but to solve a problem that they believe is solely their own. Since, the, since this is my problem, they said, uh, the only people I need to do research with is myself. Other people are welcome to use my software if they want to do so, but in the understanding that my software is about my problem and it might not be ideal for them. Although there is a certain logic to this argument, I think it is also somehow detached from reality. You see, um, when you make a piece of software, your age, it's your age, as long as you are the only person using that software. The moment a user comes along, someone else comes along and starts using your software, the age all of a sudden becomes 50% yours and 50% someone else's. When a second user comes along, then the age becomes about 33% yours. When a third user appears, your age becomes 20% yours. Do you see where I'm going with this? The percentage of your age reduces exponentially as you add users to your software. So by the time 50 people are using it, your age, what used to be your age, is now only 2% yours. Of course, you may, use to tell, you may choose to tell yourself that your age is still your age, 
But that doesn't, that doesn't change the fact that it is not anymore. The only way for your itch to remain your itch is keeping the source code to yourself. The moment you release your code then for the world to use, you need to come to terms with the fact that your itch is unlikely to remain yours for long. The truth is that the moment you release your code, you release your itch with it. The second type of naysayers are the scornful. And the scornful are the kind of people who will quote you Henry Ford. They argue that people, that users of software, are incapable of telling you what they need or what they want. And that, use, that designers are somehow better positioned to determine those things than people themselves. As if designers were some kind of you know, superior or more evolved kind of human being, one that has managed to overcome the limitation, the human limitation that stops us from being able to articulate our own needs and wants. I'm sure I don't need to convince you that people who believe designers are in any way superior to other human beings are killing themselves. Designers are, are in, as incapable of articulating their own wants and needs and determining what it is that they want or what they need as anyone else. The only superpower designers have is the recognition that this is so, that this is a quintessential human limitation and that overcoming that limitation requires time and effort and that certain tricks of the design trade for instance, doing research with users can help us overcome that limitation. The third type of um, naysayer is the dismissive. The dismissive, um, the dismissive will tell you that every time you ask someone anything related to design, every single person will tell you a different thing. And then the designer will be left to try and sort out the mess. The designer will need to try and reconcile different opinions about things that may not only just be different, sometimes they may, they may be also contradictory, so um, they, they could very well be reconcilable. And these will lead to design paralysis, where God saves us all, the dreaded design by committee. These people seem to be under, this pressure, under the impression that um, doing research with users is about asking the users their opinion about things, what they think about stuff. But actually, doing research with users is not like that at all. The object of the study in user research is not users' opinions, it's actually human behavior. And in the process of trying to make sense of understanding human behavior, sometimes when we do research, we'll have conversations with people and we'll ask them questions. But those questions will never be directly about the software we are building or the thing we are designing. They will be about the problem we are trying to solve with the software, about the context and the circumstances in which that problem exists and about the ways people try to solve that problem now, before using the software, which are often very quirky and very creative. And sometimes the research we do, a whole chunk of the research we do with users, actually does not involve any question asking at all. It involves just observing, observing how people go about their business, observing how they solve their problems, observing the context, within which they live and do things. And sometimes, yes, <laughs> it also involves watching people, observing people as they use our software, what we often call usability testing. As we go about observing people's behaviors, we come across the fact that these are very individual. You know, every person is slightly different, but across that individuality, there are also strong patterns and commonalities and sameness. Those are the things that are normally really extremely useful to designers. Those are the things we are hunting for when we are doing user research. And because in the end, design research, user research has absolutely nothing to do 
um, with opinions, as I said, of what people think. It is about uncovering the commonalities that underpin individual human behavior. And finally, the last type of naysayer in free software, I call the defeatist. The defeatists claim that research, doing research with users, it's just too much work. It takes too much time, too much energy, too much effort, too much money. And because of that, it is unsuitable for free software projects. I imagine that for the defeatist, um, the word research must conjure images of you know, fancy research labs with one-way mirrors and loads of cameras, or really long longitudinal studies or years-long ethnographic endeavors that, that result in 10,000 paper, 10,000 work papers and that are going to be published in a very serious journal. And um, that's the stuff academics do, because they are trying to develop theory. But hang on a minute. We are not trying to develop theory here. We are just trying to make some software for crying out loud. So here is the truth about the kind of research that is suitable for our software making purposes. Let's start with time. How long does it take to do this type of research? Well, if you, will, if you want to do an interview study, if you want to go and talk to some of your users, six users is enough. And if you want to do a usability test study, you want to observe people as they use your software, five people, five users is enough. Your research sessions should never be longer than 45 minutes. This means that a usability study can be done in three hours and 45 minutes, and an interview study can be done in four and a half hours. I don't know about you, but I don't think, I don't think this is that much time. What about the money? How much does it cost to do research? Is it really that expensive? Well, let's see. Tons of research with users can be done remotely using things like Jitsi Meet. Um, research can be captured by recording audio and video um, with things like OBS Studio completely for free, as before with Jitsi. And uh, you don't need to pay money to your research participants necessarily. Um, you see, there are lots of ways that you can compensate your research participants for their time, their effort, and their feedback. You just need to have an honest conversation with, that, uh, with them about it. Perhaps they want some training about something to do with the software in return for taking part of your research. Or maybe they just want, they just want a t-shirt or some stickers. Or maybe they just want a thank you. Just a thank you may be enough. You see, um, taking part in research is a form of contributing to free software. Just like submitting code or writing documentation, a lot of us contribute to free software, to free software for pleasure. So it is very likely that some of your user base, at least, would be willing to help you just for the pleasure to help a free software project. Remember, research is a form of contribution to free software, even if, if we are not used to think of it that way. And we should really start considering and valuing it so. So, research, it turns out that research doesn't need to be expensive and can be done for zero euro. What about the effort? The bulk of the effort of doing research is actually making sense of it. What we call the analysis process, trying to understand what it is that the research is trying to tell you. Research analysis can be done quite effectively in teams using the affinity diagram technique, which uh, this is what the video is showing you at the moment, a group of people trying to make sense of research all together. So this can be done in a few hours. But because your research studies are likely to be small, with a small number of participants and short sessions, um, you can easily analyze the research by yourself as well in just a couple of hours. Here is an example of that kind of analysis that I did just by myself in about an hour and a half. And you don't need to write after working out what the research was trying to tell you. In order to communicate your, your, research, your research to other people involved in the free software project, you don't need to write a 100-page report. In fact, you shouldn't write a 100-page report because it's warranted that nobody will read it. Um, you can just simply 
write a blog post or a wiki page or an email to a mailing list, or you can organize a call or record a podcast to explain what you learned through the research. All these shortcuts will do. And they can be done very effectively in a, you know, in a very short period of time. So really, it doesn't take that much effort to do research either. So finally, some common sense advice if you want to introduce research activities in your free software project. First, um, if it looks like you cannot answer the questions you have about your software uh, with one of these small studies, break down your research questions into simpler research questions. Okay, just make the questions you're asking yourself and the software and the questions you want to ask your users a little bit simpler and organize several small studies instead of a really big one. In the end, you are way more likely to learn more stuff with these mini studies than if you organize a single study that is really big. That's really not a very effective way of working. So no, not, don't talk to 30 users for in a single study. That doesn't make sense. Just Organize six different studies, five different studies with six people. Get into the habit of doing research periodically. For instance, a user interview per month. And um, this way, your insights about your users, your knowledge about your users will build over time as you do more and more of those. In the end, free software projects are not in a hurry. You don't need to beat anyone to market or any crap. So you can take your time with the research too. And finally, remember that research is not a bunch of activities you do. Research is first and foremost an attitude. An attitude that you bring with you to every single encounter with your users. An attitude of genuine interest that, that results in detailed observations of human behavior. Immerse yourself in the environment of your users. Observe the ways they go about stuff and uh, watch them as they use your software. Um, because um, I, I don't let, you know, don't let the naysayers stop you from doing software, from doing research for your free software project. Because sure, we can make just software without doing any research with your users. But if you want to make good software, the kind of software that makes sense to the people who use it, you cannot do that without messing about with the research bits. Thanks very much.